Hi guys, this is Dr. Sadashivam once again with you. In the past series of videos, we had talked a lot about how the brain functions and what effect it has on our behavior on a day-to-day -day basis. And in today's video, we are going to talk about a very important concept and that is harmonizing our emotions and thoughts. So before we get into the subject, I would like to give you an analogy of a ceiling fan. I wanted to give this analogy because this was the same analogy provided by Daniel Goleman, the author of uh, Emotional Intelligence. He talks about one instance of a guy when he was half asleep, when he hears the thud of a ceiling fan falling down. He wakes up from his sleep he was very shocked, but at the same time, he finds the ceiling fan as well as the ceiling, they were absolutely intact. But what fell down was a rack of books that fell from a table. The books that fell from the table, how did that make him feel that the ceiling fan fell down? That's a question. Because something in the past might have happened as a result of which this guy associates any such sound with the sound of a ceiling fan falling down. This can be an unfounded fear or this could be caused because of some instance faced in life or something imaginary or something he heard from his friends. Because these past events, they have a very serious effect on future behavior, future thinking. Now we are going to talk about what exactly happens. Now the emergency route from the sense organs, either your eye or the ear. So when you perceive something, when you see something, the signals go to your thalamus and from the thalamus it goes to your amygdala. This whole journey of the signals going from your eye or the ear to the thalamus and then to the amygdala is very, very crucial. This holds good, especially during the emergency situation. Because as we all know, during the emergency situation, a very instantaneous response is what is required. In fact, this is also called as reflex action because you unconsciously do certain actions reflex actions but in the whole process if you see only a small portion of the information is transmitted to your amygdala whereas majority of that is transmitted through the long main route the nerve roots up to your neocortex we have studied in the earlier videos that neocortex is the thinking brain remember that is the one which thing Whereas this amygdala is some kind of an acting brain. Remember we talked about reptilian brains, mammalian brains, which basically carries out all your life fun functions, typically the animal brain. That's what we read about amygdala. So only a small portion of the message goes to your amygdala, whereas majority is transmitted to your neocortex, which is your thinking brain. Though some researchers have shown that the amygdala in a rat, it begins a response in 12 milliseconds, guys. 12 milliseconds is one twelve thousandth of a second, right? So probably this is as far as the amygdala is concerned. The route from the thalamus to the neocortex is twice that long, maybe 24 milliseconds or something. That means amygdala is able to act very fast, but only a small amount of information goes there. Whereas the cortex, the majority of the information flows to the cortex, but its response is not as quick as amygdala, which is why amygdala, we always call, call it as an animal brain, a limbic brain. Now we have talked about this research in rats, but we are not very sure if such researches have been done in human beings or not. But we can surely take that as uh, an indication that can hold good for your human brains also. So typically the time taken for the um, signal to reach the amygdala can be a lot faster. 
Now, if you look at it from an evolutionary perspective, it was important. We're talking about amygdala, which is fast reacting. Why? Because that was required for survival. Example, take a squirrel. If you give a small reaction, its reflex action is extremely fast. It is able to sense that and start running away. So, one of the reasons for that is precognitive emotions, snap judgments. This is what some uh, researchers have uh, said. They call it precognitive emotions. But let's not worry too much about this subject. As we go on in the subsequent videos, we will explain that in a layman's language. Now, typically when you talk about amygdala and all that, it is important for us to talk about one more part, which is our prefrontal areas. The prefrontal lobes of the brain are extremely important because it is those which govern your reactions. In fact, we have studied that the largest portion of the information, they go to neocortex and not to the amygdala, looking at the quantity of information. Though it is a different fact that amygdala reacts a lot faster compared to the neortex. Because that's exactly where most of these decisions are made and most of our behavior are orchestrated. For example, in animals, when to attack, whom to attack, when to run, all these decisions are taken by your prefrontal lobes. In human beings, same thing. When to attack, when to run, when to seek sympathy, <laughs> persuade, provoke, put up with a facade of bravery in all these reactions, all these behavior, which we use in our everyday uh, lives. All these are regulated by your prefrontal areas, prefrontal lobes. So when you talk about these kinds of emotional reactions, there are two kinds of dynamics which are involved. One is the triggering of the amygdala. We have talked a lot about triggering of the amygdala in our previous video. So in short language, triggering of amygdala is nothing but your impulse reactions. Things that we do without thinking. The actions that we do without thinking. And the second thing that it does is failure to activate your neocortex. Because neocortex is your thinking brain. You look at pros and cons. We talked about murders. The guy didn't even think about the pros and cons, but he gets into that act. Amygdala makes that happen. And during that brief period, his brain is not working. That means his neocortex is not activated. That's what we're talking about. So in one way, we can say that the prefrontal lobes, they act as a manager of your brain. They manage your emotions. Just a simple example. Just like, you know, an impulsive child is making mistakes or creating new nuisance. The parent goes and controls the child. Like a parent who stops an impulsive child from doing that uh, nuisance. They say, please wait for some time. So this is some kind of a regulating mechanism. This is what typically your uh, lobes done. It is a key of switch for controlling your emotions. But that happens to be your left prefrontal lobes. Please remember very, very carefully. We are talking about the prefrontal lobes. There is a left, there is a right. Now the left is a kind of a regulator, on off switch. What is right? The right is the seat of all worries, all kinds of worries, fears, prejudice, greed. They're all seated on the right side. Now the left side acts as a neural thermostat. It is like a regulator, right? You have a thermostat in your air conditioner. When the temperature goes down or goes up a certain limit, it starts acting. Remember, there's a difference between a thermometer and a thermostat. Thermometer can tell you the temperature, but the th thermostat, depending on the temperature, it takes an action. It makes an action on or off. There was a great research which was done on, which was done on stroke patients. And that research clearly showed the damage on the left side. Left side of the prefrontal lobes were damaged. Those people were prone to worries because the left prefrontal lobes, they work as a regulator. So obviously when the regulator is damaged, those guys were prone to more worries. But damage on the right side of the prefrontal lobes, those guys were unduly cheerful. 
because the right is the seat of all your worries and if that is completely damaged you will not have any worry at all you will be happy under any situation right so just for example even daniel goldman quotes the same example in his book there was a guy whose right portion of prefrontal lobes had to be operated for some uh, you know brain operation or something like that but once that was done his wife gave a feedback that this guy was absolutely much more happy than before he's much more sensitive why did that happen because the right side which was the seed of your fear greed and all those emotions that was removed but of course that was a surgical procedure to remove some tumor right so in short we can say that amygdala is something which will propose but your front lobes will dispose amygdala will propose and the front lobes will dispose right now one question might arise in our mind what if we completely take out the right portion in everybody through a surgical procedure no that's not possible because we need to have some balance right otherwise we'll become machines because what makes people human are those emotions so both sides need to be there and the balance is what is important and that is the topic we are talking about that is harmonizing because the whole thing is about harmonizing our emotions and thoughts so that is why it is also said that when we are emotionally uh, you know uh, upset we cannot think straight also so it is always better to give a pause so there's another research we will conclude uh, this particular uh, video with the research which was done by uh, uh, dr uh, antonio damasio he was a neurological professor at the university of iowa what he did was he picked up some high iq students who were very problematic because they had high levels of eq because your your iqs were judged by certain tests but those were the same students who were very problematic who had a rebellious uh, attitude he picked up quarrel with other people and he did extensive research he came up with uh, uh, a conclusion that most of those students had a faulty prefrontal cortex not that those guys had low iqs because those guys had highest iqs they were able to score extremely good marks in the examination but they were not leading an emotionally stable life they picked up quarrel with friends someone even got into crime they were not in the good books of professors they had uh, you know these kinds of unruly behavior in the college in the class and their neighbors near the house they were also giving the same feedback and whole lot of issues were attributed to the prefrontal cortex this was one of the path breaking researches of dr antonio damasio so we had looked at some of these brain parts that give us an idea of how the brain functions and what are some of the interlinkages between amygdala the neocortex which is uh, the uh, you know uh, animal instincts uh, which uh, governs our behavior and also our thinking brain and both of these two need to be regulated so in short you have this amygdala uh, you have this cortex the thinking brain cortex uh, we talked about it is the thinking brain and your amygdala is kind of a reacting thing and in today we have also talked one step above which is your prefrontal lobes which have a left and the right portion the left is some kind of a regulator which regulates your behavior and the right is the seat of your worries and each of these work on harmonizing your thoughts and emotions for human beings to be emotionally stable i know these are complex theories but nothing wrong even if uh, you are able to understand uh, only 50 or 60% nothing wrong we will go ahead and uh, in the part 2 we will come across lots and lots of examples in ter uh, terms of the knowledge of uh, how this human brain works it will help us understand those complex theories in a much better manner and that is why we are spending lot of time understanding the anatomy of the human brain from the next brain uh, next video onwards we will focus on the practical aspects i hope you all enjoyed this video and this is dr sadashivam signing off till we meet again bye bye jai hind